Lambert Sliding Model. The Lambert Sliding Model, or also known as Diffuse Reflection or Diffuse Sliding Model, makes uh, an assumption. It's, it assumes that the light that hits a surface scatters in all directions uniformly. So if you have a red surface, we get some light shining on it, then every point on this surface uh, is seen the same red shade from any direction. So if we are like over here, we look at the surface, we see the same red shade as if we would be over here. The scene color is independent of the view direction. So no matter where the camera is, we see the same color. But something does happen when we change the light's direction. So when light is shining from this angle, something will be different than if it were to shine from this angle. To notice it, we have to look a bit closer. So right now, on the left, we have this uh, beam of light, this one unit of, of light uh, shining in, in some beam. Let's make it have some volume. So there is this beam of light, one unit uh, in diameter, that is shining on this part of the surface. We have the same one unit of beam, uh, beam of light, but it's shining more directly onto the surface. So the angle here is, is, is uh, less in relation to the surface normal. And you can observe that the length that this left beam of light covers is larger than the length that this right beam of light covers. And if we have this same beam of light with the same energy shining on the surface at this, this grazing angle or this larger angle here, then the same amount of light energy is spread across a larger surface, meaning that one unit of surface gets less light. It gets less light. But if the light is shining more directly on the surface, then this one unit of surface gets more light. This is why if you like have a flashlight and you try to uh, look at something or maybe read something, uh, or some text on the wall, you want to shine the light directly onto it. Not at some angle where it would spread across the entire wall. But now our question is, if you have one unit of surface, then how much light is actually reaching it from some given angle? Because this one uni unit of surface, we can think of that as one fragment or one pixel that we want to shade. So we have our geometry projected onto our screen. Some fragment is covering a pixel on our screen. We want to shade it with the correct color. We have some light source somewhere in our 3D world. It's shining on the surface uh, at some angle. And now we uh, have a question how much should that pixel on the screen lit up so that it would shade the object uh, nicely. So we have this one unit of surface, one pixel, one fragment, and light coming in at some direction, and we care about how much uh, uh, light is coming in, or we can think about it like how wide this beam of light is. So let's move this line a bit closer, making a triangle. As you, as you have seen, lots of things can be calculated with just right angle triangles. So triangles are very important in, in geometry, in computer graphics. And we have this angle. So light is coming in at some angle alpha. And now we have again this, well, this same trigonometry thing. So the sine of alpha is just the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is one, we take the opposite leg, well, that's sine of alpha. Uh, so at this angle, if we measure it this way, the amount of light reaching this surface is just sine of alpha. But calculating the sine is a bit tricky. We actually want a cosine because remember, a cosine could be calculated very easily with just a dot product. So instead of this sine of alpha, let's take cosine of 90 degrees minus alpha, cosine of this beta. So this angle now is an angle between the surface normal and this direction uh, of light. So instead of the angle between the surface and the direction of light, we take the angle between the surface normal and the direction of light. 90 minus alpha, 90 degrees minus this angle is that angle. And this gives us cosine, cosine of beta. And this is how this calculation works. So we take the surface normal, we take the vector towards the light source. So if let's say we have some sort of a, a point light source somewhere, some location where light is coming from, we have our, the location of our current fragment. 
just take a vector from our current frag fragment to the light source and we normalize it. And that's our vector L. The no surface normal N and vector towards the light source L. And to find the, the cosine of the angle between those two vectors, we just take the dot product uh, to calculate it. And so the amount of light reaching a unit surface is just a dot product between N and L. And this is really important. So this N dot L, this is uh, physically accurate. And this gives us directly this amount of light that reaches the surface. So if we start defining our lighting model, let's say this E is kind of the intensity of our pixel or the color of our pixel that it has to, how much does it have to light up? Then uh, let's put this end dot L here. So light is coming in at some direction. Some amount of it is reaching the surface. And then because we assume this uniform diffuse uh, scattering or diffuse reflection, then we see the same amount from any direction and that's the amount of light reaching the surface, that's n dot L. There are a couple of things we want to tune or, or specify when we have a lighting model. First of all, the light. So is it uh, a red light, green light? Is it like uh, a very bright light? Is it a dim light? So let's define this uh, vector L. That's an RGB vector that specifies the color of the light source. So it says how much red light, how much green light, and how much blue light this light emits. If all these values are one, it's like full white, full, full brightness. If it's, let's say, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's a bit dim. If it's uh, 1, 0, 0, it's a red light, and so on. So we have this L that specifies the color of the light source. Next, we also want to specify the surface material, so M and its color. So is it a red table? Is it a green table? What color is our surface? So what uh, wavelengths of light this surface reflects? And that would be M and we kind of multiply it into the formula. We have this intensity equals M, the color of our material, times L, the color of our light, times N dot L. And now this is one of these places where you have to know what uh, is actually going on, what, what is being calculated here, uh, because this n dot l, this is a dot product between n and l vectors, and we want, it, uh, we want to calculate the cosine that way. But these m and l, these are just RGB vectors, and we want the result to be also an RGB vector. So these are just element-wise multiplications. And this dot product gives us a scalar, which we multiply into here. It really makes sense if you start to think about it. We have red, green, and blue channels. We want to modify them separately. And we have this n dot L, which just says how much of the light is reaching the surface, some scalar percentage value. To recap, this result is how much should the pixel light up an RGB vector. So if you output this from the fragment shader, if it's one, 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 the pixel lights up as bright as it can. If it's uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it lights up halfway uh, as bright as it can. Actually, that's not true. Uh, there's also this thing called comma correction there. But right now, we can just imagine that it works like that. If it's 0, 0, 0, then the pixel is completely turned off. If it's 1, 0, 0, then you have full uh, brightness in the red channel and 0 in the green and 0 in the blue channels. Next we have this uh, M, so this is the color of the material, again an RGB vector. We multiply it with L, the color of the light source, so element-wise multiplications. If you have a red surface, so 1, 0, 0, and you shine a green light on it, so 0, 1, 0, then the result will be 0, 0, 0, it would be black. And then we have this N dot L, which just tells us how much light is reaching this surface unit, at this particular direction. And that's uh, this diffuse reflection, this Lambertian uh, model. And we will be adding some, some other things on top of this equation in the following materials. But right now, just be sure you understand this. So from this video, you should now understand the diffuse on Lambertian lighting model. We assume, or this model assumes, that the diffuse light scatters uniformly to all directions. The amount of light reaching the surface depends on its angle and the cosine of the 
angle between the surface normal n and the vector towards the light source L gives us the amount of light reaching the surface. The dot product easily gives us this cosine. And you should also now understand this lighting model construction, which we have begun the light's color L, the material's color M, and the RGB vector equation that gives us this pixel color I.